All right, I think that's it. I think uh, if people keep dropping in, that's fine. Um, but we can start the meetup right now. So how are y'all doing? Awesome. <laughs> the most silent cheer I've ever heard. Um, cool. So my name is Niklas. I am the CTO of Piloxa, and we're hosting this meetup. Uh, the plan was initially to host the meetup at our office, but things turned out differently. So we're doing this remote instead. And I think this, I'm really stoked to see how this works. I think it's pretty cool. Um, and for today we have Vlad, uh, who will be our guest speaker. Uh, we have no affiliation together, but we are good friends and we know each other since before. Uh, and uh, before we get things started, I'm just gonna go through the agenda for tonight. Um, so I'm the host. With me, I have my co-host, of course, Vlad, and also my dear colleague, Peter, who will be the technical, technical support for tonight. And uh, we will also record the talk that Vlad is doing so that we can share it later for those who couldn't attend tonight. And the agenda is just a quick intro by me, uh, a little bit of like house rules about Zoom. Uh, we're also then going to talk about just very briefly about what we do at Pilox and how we use Clojure for greatness. And uh, then we move straight to the main talk by Vlad. And uh, around 19, I will have a short break. And after that, we'll do a workout session together. And then we'll get back around 20 and do some mingling until the, I think the chat closes at nine automatically, I think. Um, so that's just very shortly about today. Uh, and you will be able to use the chats, like I mentioned, uh, to keep things civilized. And we'll try to monitor it as good as we can. So let's just talk a little bit about us at Piloxa and what we do. Let's see if I can share. This is the first for me, so I'm just gonna see if I can share my screen. Um, there. Is everybody able to see this? This? Cool. So what do we do at Piloxa? Uh, Piloxa is a tool for helping you take your medication on time. So we have developed our custom hardware uh, where you as a user can store your medication and it will remind you to take your medication by flashing lights and it will also sense when you take your medication. And we couple this with an app and this is where we use Clojure. So we've built our entire app in Clojure Script on top of React Native. And in this app, you can track uh, when you've taken your medication, you can get reminded to take your medication. And like I said, it's built in Clojure Script and in uh, on React Native, and it all communicates via Bluetooth with the pillbox. And the pillbox itself is written in C, of course, not Clojure. We'd like to write it in Clojure, but unfortunately we couldn't go that far. Uh, and we, we've been writing this app for close to four years now, and we just believe that using Clojure has been the best tool for us in being able to be a small team that still delivers a lot of like high quality results in a short amount of time. But we're not here to listen to what we do at Piloxa. We're here to listen to Vlad. Um, but before we do that, I'm just gonna see if we can get the technology to work. So, Zoom has this amazing feature where you can raise your hand. So let's try and do that together as a, an emoji. So can we just see, can we find this somewhere um, more? Yes, people are raising their hands, awesome. So if you go to the participants list, you can see a tiny little dot, dot, dot with claps and yeses and noes and hands. Cool. So let's do just a quick sweep. Um, who here has, uh, who here is from Sweden, actually? Yeah, a lot of people, not everybody. Uh, who is from Stockholm as well, where this meetup would have been held? Cool. Who has been, who has, been, uh, who has professionally worked with Clojure? A lot of people, awesome. Who has never even used Clojure, but is just curious? Who consider themselves like novices? Yeah, we have one there, we have a few there. Cool, who here is wearing pants right now? Not everybody, interesting. <laughs> awesome, 
And who has been using a CLJ FX? Yeah? There are a few. Awesome. Then uh, you have something to learn about here. So Vlad, me and Vlad got in touch a few months ago and my dear uh, colleague Peter actually used uh, CLGFX uh, professionally as part of his work about half a year ago, I think. And uh, Vlad is an Amer experienced Clojure professional as well. And uh, he is, of course, the author of CLGFX. So Vlad, I think uh, it's time to hand over the mic to you, metaphorically. Hello, everyone. And <coughs> uh, good evening. Uh, so let's get started. I'm gonna share a screen. Do you see it now? Can you raise your hands? Okay. Uh, so we're gonna talk about bringing closure to the desktop today. And we will start with who I am. Uh, my name is Flat. I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing lately. Um, and I'm a professional Clojure developer. I, I, I've been writing Clojure for past four years. And I started in a fairly, I guess, common Clojure setup, which is uh, using Clojure on the back end for the web service and Clojure script on the front end for uh, progressive web app. <coughs> Uh, and yet uh, a bit more than a year ago, uh, I have got an interesting job offer and which is developing a default editor. So default is a game engine uh, which is written in C++. Uh, it's cross-platform uh, and it uh, it uses Lua for scripting. So what does it have to do with Clojure? Well, the the idea behind editor for this uh, for this game engine is to provide uh, as uh, as convenient setup for developer as possible, which includes uh, uh, features such as hot reload of any resources that you're you can uh, create in game. Uh, while the game you are developing is running, which is sort of similar to Clojure. So uh, about five years ago, uh, Ragnar Svensson, one of the original authors of Default, presented at Clojure Conch their rewrite of their old editor that was written in Java to Clojure. So they had problems with the uh, with the features they wanted for the editor and uh, like uh, hot reloading. Uh, so they, yeah, so they turned to Clojure as a tool to, to manage all the complexity with state and dependency graph of uh, computations and invalidations and all that. And closure is the kind of language uh, that gives uh, primitives such as, uh, and gives you tools to separate state from identity using values and uh, references uh, as a separate things. Uh, so they did uh, all this beautiful, uh, they wrote all this beautiful dependency graph for for this game engine, but they they stopped there. Uh, so the even though the like the core, the logic of all of uh, all of game related functionality is written in closure in a very uh, uh, beautiful style, the uh, like uh, functional and mutable. But the, the the rest, the UI for that, which is since it's a closure application. Uh, well, it was written in Java fix and uh, it, it, it is a like a completely uh, normal OOP style uh, UI. Uh, uh, so 
yeah, when I came there, I I felt that uh, well, yeah. Since before that, I was writing closure and in closure script on the front end and enjoying the benefits we have from React. Uh, and in the closure script land uh, re reagent and reframe uh i was i missed it a lot so uh i had an idea to writing some sort of a functional idiomatic for closure wrapper uh of javafx that uh that is conceptually similar to react uh, around that time, there was another problem, and which I am very passionate about is a it's a tooling uh, that we currently have in in Clojure. Uh, especially, I'm talking about REPLs uh, because in Clojure, REPL is a like the main development workflow, but the P part of the REPL, the printing, is uh, uh, usually just a string, like a stream of characters that uh, all you can do with is basically read or copy paste it somewhere. Uh, and just to uh, just to show what uh, what else can be there, I can I'm going to show you a REPL that all of you already have uh, that allows inspecting data however you want navigating into it uh saving it to uh, to to variables and then running any function on it and you already have that you ready uh that's a web browser console uh so web console is a tool for like uh playing with the um with data you have on the web page, but uh, it's actually a, a pretty powerful REPL. See, you can uh, enter uh, expressions there and it will show your results and you can navigate them and store them uh, as a temporary var variables that you can then call functions on. And all of this is written for, uh, for a language uh, that, is, doesn't, that doesn't use REPL-driven development at all. I, I, JavaScript isn't made for this kind of uh, workflow while closure is made. And yet uh, all we have is text. Um, and yeah, one thing that I think is pretty powerful about uh, these kinds of uh, exploratory tools that are possible is that they are in process. So they are fairly easy to build because you, you have uh, access to a reference and you can just uh, inspect it however you want. Uh, you're not, there, is, there, there are no like boundaries uh, preventing you from inspect, uh, inspecting it, like uh, needing to serialize it and send it to another process. Well, luckily Clojure has, uh, has an inspector. Uh, and uh, how many of you know about this namespace? How many of you do know that it exists? Can you raise your hands? Yeah, actually I don't see them. Okay. Uh, so uh, what what does it do? Uh, it uh, it allows to to inspect the values you you pass to it mostly for like a table view and the tree view. But the problem is uh, it uses Swing, which is a deprecated uh, Java UI framework uh, that hasn't been updated uh, for a long time. It was superseded by JavaFX. So for example, as you see on this screenshot, it, uh, it doesn't support high DPI uh, on my Linux. Also, what it shows, what it prints is just it, it, once again, it's just strings, so you you can't save them to uh, like you can def them to your username space to explore them further. Um, so I, I think this is we are still not there, but we are slowly slowly getting there. So there is a new 
tool from Cognitect. Uh, it's called Treble. How many, how many of you know that this tool exists? Can you raise your hands? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, so I think this tool is a step in the right direction. Uh, uh, by the way, it's also written in JavaFX. Uh, uh, but I think we are not quite there yet because uh, if you if you look at this tool, uh, when you have some data, you can choose a viewer for this data. But uh, you are still limited by uh, like the navigation capabilities are still limited by Datafy and NAF uh, protocols that Closure 1.10 provides. You uh, well, you can say that uh, the right pane, uh, the viewer, uh, is a leaf node. Yes, it shows uh, some different UI, but you you can do anything with it. Like you can select a, a symbol and see, uh, like uh, I don't know, like a hash code of that, or inspect it however you want. So this is, uh, that's why I'm working on a tool that is similar to Rebel, uh, which, uh, uh, which is called Reveal. Um, and it, it's, it's built on CLGFX. And I think that uh, with the, this, kinds of libraries that uh, allow creating complex UI manageable, uh, we can do much more than that. So here you can see me developing a Hacker News application using CLGFX, and I'm able to look at the, at the window that is showing uh, and uh, inspect fields that it has and select different parts of the visualiza visualizations and go further there. Uh, so the, the idea is to, to make uh, views not a leaf node that you can look at, but uh, a part of this exploration or uh, navigation tree. And it, it would be very hard to do with the OOP style uh, UI programming enclosure. So uh, that's why I made CLG fix. Uh, and before we start, uh, uh, start uh, diving into the details, I'm, I want to address an elephant in the room when it comes to creating desktop application, which is Electron. Uh, so I prepared for you a somewhat unbiased comparison to Electron. It is somewhat unbiased in a sense that I didn't have intention to provide scientifically correct numbers. Uh, it's just like a overall impression or a feel to it. But it's unbiased in a sense that I'm not trying to push an agenda that CLJ and CLJ fixes uh, uh, the best you will ever get. <laughs> so I'll just quickly go uh, over that. Uh, so both CLGFX and Electron are memory hogs and the resource hogs. Uh, but when it comes to language, Clojure I think is more powerful because Clojure script was initially made for uh, for web and it has its own requirements. Uh, for example, having a very lean runtime. So the download uh, when you open a web page is as, as small as possible. That, uh, for example, uh, doesn't allow bundling a compiler into the, the application itself like Clojure does. Uh, and this creates uh, limitations like having to, re to define Markers in a different namespace, uh, or what's uh, it's called, different compilation unit. 
And yeah, the problem with comparisons between uh, Java for desktop or uh, JavaScript for desktop is that Java developers like to compare uh, GVM to 2005 JavaScript and JavaScript developers like to compare uh, Electron to 2005 Java and both of these platforms evolved a lot in the recent years. So uh, there is this idea that um, that JavaScript is a, essentially a single threaded language, uh, but the, it's clearly not true. Uh, first, all the network requests perform asynchronously. You just uh, observe the results on the same thread you're using for anything else, but you also can spawn web workers and uh, you can, doing that is as easy as creating a promise. Uh, but uh, still performance wise, JavaScript uh, approach for uh, multi-phrasing, like JavaScript semantics for multi-phrasing requires serialization all the data between threads while GVM can, can just share it. So even though concurrency is possible on both platforms, performance is usually uh, better uh, on the GVM. Both ecosystems are huge. So if you want the library, you will be able to find it anywhere, uh, both on Maven and on NPM. But Maven, I think, is more major. Uh, I don't remember Maven being down uh, any time before, but I remember NPM being down or half of the NPM ecosystem being uh, unavailable because someone decided to unpublish a package and that didn't ha doesn't, doesn't seem to happen on the GVM. Yeah, but there are still downsides like industry support is slow. There are very many, many companies uh, that bet on the Electron and uh, JavaFX which is a, a, a main supported Java framework is developed by uh, just a single team at Oracle. Uh, and CLGFX is developed by this one guy. Uh, and there is also a thing that is very, very good about the web that is that people usually forget about and that is typesetting. By typesetting, I mean uh, the original roots of the web, which is being uh, a way to render documents. So uh, features like being able to select all the text on the page or being able to zoom in or out of any text or being able to hit Control F and find uh, text on this page. Uh, all of this uh, you, you get for free on the uh, in the browser, but you have to implement it yourself in the uh, in the CLG fix. Okay, so I think we are finished with that, and we can uh, start looking at what CLG fix is. And we are going to start with component description. So this is uh, the main building block of CLG fix. Uh, how many of you have used uh, reagent before? How many of you are familiar with the hiccup markup? Can you? Uh, okay, raise your hands. Okay, a lot of people. Uh, so, yeah, I had an option to use hiccup for that, uh, but I decided not to because uh, the idea behind hiccup is that you can you can put like child nodes on on every node. And this is because the web is done like that. Uh, it has its roots in, in, well, HTML has its roots in XML that allows uh, nesting anything in anything. And this is not true in JavaFX. So that's why I'm using uh, maps instead of hiccup markup. Uh, also, I think it's much more, uh, it's much more convenient to modify maps uh, than hiccup uh, vectors programmatically. For example, if you want to add a, a, another property to your hiccup markup, 
you will need to look uh, at this uh, like at the second element uh, check if it's a map if it's not you you need to create it from scratch uh, if there is well uh, what i mean is uh, i think it's easier to modify maps than hiccup markup so but uh, yeah this is a company description and uh, it's just value that uh, that doesn't have much meaning behind it uh, but uh, then we will be able uh, to create uh, a JavaFX nodes using this the description. And this is where CLJFX comes into play. So yeah, as you see, every description, every component description has a FX type uh, keyword, which is special. Uh, it describes a class, a JavaFX class that is used used to like uh, the ethens of what we are creating. And well, the component creation is simple. There is a function create component. Uh, if we were to, to convert this code to a vanilla closure, it would look like that. So yeah, JavaFX has text field, it has text, properties that you can set or add listeners to them and uh, uh, it, it might seem that uh, there is not much of a difference between those two approaches uh, like why do you want to learn uh, this library then you when you can just create your notes uh, by yourself but uh, it all gets very complicated when you want to start modifying your uh, your views. Because uh, if you are using OOP approach, you have to keep a reference to your text field. And when your data changes, you have to uh, invoke uh, set text manually. Uh, but here you, you don't need to keep any references to anything. Uh, uh, except the, the root component. And all of the advancing of the state happens uh, when you when you just, uh, well, all, all the advancing, the advancing of the state uh, is uh, done by just supplying a different description. So as you see here, we changed the property and it, uh, uh, it invoked a setter that uh, modified the text field. But uh, as you see, the like both component and component two uh, share the same text field instance. So in, in a sense, all of this uh, is uh, still uh, mutable, uh, but for a good reason to keep uh, everything uh, performant and reuse nodes as much as possible. So, uh, here we saw a modification of the text property, but what will happen if we change an FX type uh, while retaining all the text properties, all, all the other properties as they were. So as you see in this case, uh, CLGFX will recreate uh, well, it will discard the old text field and start using uh, a new uh, a new instance because it's of a different class. Mm. Uh, so, in addition to the keywords being used in uh, as FX types, you can also use functions and. Uh, this is how you build a, a bigger application by composing function components uh, to create uh, your UI tree. Uh, and it, it just recursively expands to a, uh, to a, uh, like a simpler or to a more native components until it can render them. Uh, so these are like the most basic building blocks of uh, CLGFX and 
there is an in, uh, like there is a tool in CLGFX to use all of that, uh, which is much simpler. And that thing is render. So what we discussed uh, right now, all this creating and advancing uh, that uh, involves some mutable state in it. And it's actually, it's also not thread safe because JavaFX is not thread safe. Uh, all of that, uh, if you don't need that, you, you don't have to touch it. Uh, there is a render. Uh, render is a function. Uh, it is stateful. But, is, but it is thread safe, so you can call it whenever you want with new description, and it will uh, it will update all the like all the components to match your description. So previously, when we were creating text fields, uh, we actually couldn't see them on screens because uh, text field is just an object in memory. So now we are moving to showing. Uh, something on the screen. And to do that, we need, uh, I think, a one minute guide to a JavaFX. So JavaFX, uh, in JavaFX, there are three main uh, like types of things. One is a window, and there are different variations of window. And the, the, the most common variation uh, is called stage and it, it corresponds to a OS window that you can see, uh, resize, close. Uh, but other windows might be like pop-ups or tooltips. Then after a window, there is a stage, uh, scene, sorry. Uh, and scene is sort of a, a description of contents of the window. like. Uh, data that is shared between all components. For example, uh, that might include uh, style sheets, CSS, or camera that is used to render 3D shapes. Oh yeah, uh, JavaFX supports rendering 3D objects out of the box, but I haven't really tried it a lot. Yeah, and finally, there are nodes which are similar to DOM uh, elements. Well, basically, these are. This is a what's usually called in UI land a scene graph. So all different kinds of things you can actually see, and this is where we are. Uh, this is where we have our text field. And using render is very simple. You can just you just code with different description and it will it will update uh, uh, the shown shown UI and uh, it's of course it's not limited to just updating props you can uh, you can change uh, like the types of nodes and CLGFX will handle all the uh, all the diffing for you so. Uh, yeah. JavaFX uh, contains a fairly big amount of different types of nodes. Uh, here you can see a V box, which is used for layout. Uh, so V stands for vertical. There is also an H box and uh, stuff like grids that were uh, in JavaFX since forever, while it's a relatively recent addition to, uh, to the web. And yeah, but we haven't yet discussed uh, events. What happens uh, we will, when we will start typing? As you can see, we have a print line uh, event handler. So once we start typing, uh, it will start generating an uh, event. Uh, and this is uh, <laughs> this is where we are. And now we're getting closer to uh, closing the whole loop between uh, sh uh, between uh, showing the showing the UI and updating it. So uh, 
if we want to have a reactive application, we want to have a, some kind of a state that we can observe. Uh, and in closure, it can be a normal atom, for example. And using this event handler, we can just update that state and then we can call render with a new state whenever it changes. So yeah, simply looking it will look like this. So you have this state atom, uh, you dereference it, uh, you apply a function to convert the state to a, a Java fix, uh, closure fix component description, and then you pass it to render. And you do it uh, on the start of the application and then every time when uh, the state of the atom changes. And in Clojure, it's relatively simple to do. Uh, you just add the watch. And in Clojure Fix, uh, there is a special function for that, which is called mount renderer, which is exactly what it does. It adds a watch to an atom and then uh, renders the state immediately. As you can see, there are some other goodies in the render, like uh, a way to supply middleware that transforms uh, the state to a to component component descriptions. And uh, that's not all. Uh, uh, as you saw earlier, uh, this this component description you see at the bottom, uh, the username input, it is tied, it is coupled with the, with the state. So you, you can't really use uh, this component independently in other place. Uh, and uh, we have, oh, SelgeFX provides a thing that is called map events uh, to decouple this event handling from the state. So you, you can specify your, uh, your event handlers not only as functions, but as a maps and then provide, uh, when you create a render, you just provide your own handler for map events. And using this, you can, uh, you can decouple, like you can limit your moving moving parts of your uh, application to a very small place, which is basically just creating a renderer and uh, and changing atom in changing state state atom in one place. Uh, well, that's not all. Uh, but. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, there is a thing that I borrowed from uh, Reframe. How many of you are uh, ha have experience with Reframe? Can you raise your hands? Mm -hmm. Not very much. Uh, okay. Uh, so there is a thing called CoEffect. Uh, it's just a fancy name for providing uh, side effectful inputs as data. So basically you have a thin thin layer between uh, your uh, unpure uh, mutable state and your event handler that separates them. And there is a thing called effects, which is the same, but for output side effects. So for example, using this Co-effects and effects. You can, uh, you can, e even your map event handler can be uh, made pure, and it will allow it to be uh, testable. Uh, and it will, it will make it easier to reason about. Uh, so going further. One of the good things about CLJFX is that it also has uh, very many examples of how you can get started or uh, uh, showcases uh, different features. It also has a CSS library. It's different. 
it, it's not included by default because it does some funky stuff with the GVM. Uh, more specifically, it creates it adds a support for a custom URL protocol. But uh, yeah, that, that's just a reason why it's a separate optional dependency. But uh, I think it this uh, it's a very useful tool because uh, unlike less or SAS or other CSS preprocessors, uh, you can use the whole power of closure to create your CSS uh, definitions, which JavaFX uses. Uh, it has its own CSS styles. And the other benefit of that is that there is no, no more boundary between your CSS and your code. So you can use, uh, you don't have to repeat yourself if you ever find yourself in a position where you have to use some color or something uh, in code because you can just define everything in code and then use it uh, use both the uh, the CSS uh, that you defined and the the like the constants that uh, are parts of that CSS in a different places. For example, in this uh, code snippet, you can see that uh, there are both style sheets that are, uh, which is a way to provide CSS and uh, th that is then used by style class property. And also a drop down shadow that uses the same color from the, from the CSS. Uh, there is there are even more uh, goodies that are uh, that are not necessary for our uh, breakout we are gonna have after if you wanna join it but I am just gonna give you like a quick overview of what is there if you uh, will find it interesting to give it a try so there are. In different places, you can use uh, special keys uh, either to affect the behavior of something like a uh, uh, representation. Like here, you can see a VBox margin that uh, makes uh, its padding from uh, for every item, uh, but also an FX slash key, which is a which can be used uh, in the collections of components like children of VBox. And uh, the diff algorithm uses this FX key to uh, to make changes from one state to another more performant. For example, by reordering your nodes instead of re-updating, uh, recreating them. For example, here you can see that we sort all the items in our uh, to-do list example by their done state to, to show only the, uh, to show first the stuff we have to do. And uh, you can make CLG fix re, uh, reorder the nodes instead of recreating them uh, when you check your checkbox. Uh, Java 14 was released this March and it includes a new tool called gpackage uh, that uh, helps with all the nitty gritty details of creating a installable application for your, uh, from your Uber jar uh, for every, well, for main desktop platforms, which are Linux, Mac and Windows. So all you need to do is to uh, give it a, a directory to pack an Uber jar uh, that is in that uh, directory, the main class and, and the name. And that's basically it. Uh, there are even more advanced stuff. Uh, there are reframe like subscriptions, which we are not going to discuss further. <laughs> um, <coughs> all this, um, all these descriptions are made extensible, so you can uh, override the behavior of props uh, that contribute to a description. For example, you can use X instance factory to have your own way to create uh, components 
or there are tools for creating your own props. And uh, in summary, I think that uh, GVM is a fitting uh, platform for a, uh, for some desktop applications, be it a, uh, a very complex applications like game engine editors with uh, uh, lots of state and dependencies between different parts of uh, the app or a, a GVM tooling. And uh, all of that uh, can be done easily with, uh, or all of that can be done more manageable when you use something like SteelGFX. And this is it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Vlad. That was, <laughs> that was great. I'm thinking uh, we have a lot of questions in the chat. Should we maybe pass over the mic in order to everybody who's asked questions? Um, I think we can do that. We can start with, with myself. Yeah. How fitting. So I had a question about uh, your, your first example, the reveal. Um, did you render HTML in that or did you uh, did you render that as native components? You mean this? Like, uh, the previous slide. This one. Yes. Uh, well, there is no HTML, but uh, JavaFX bundles WebKit in it, so you can render HTML using okay. it. So, so, in a sense, uh, you're still having a browser there, <laughs> but it's optional. Okay. Awesome. And it's not used here. Cool. And then we had some questions from Emil Bengtsson as well, who asked uh, about JavaFX. Um, good resources to get started with JavaFX if you're not used to it. Because I mean, most people have probably touched HTML at some point in their life. So moving to Hiccup is maybe a bit uh, easier because you have some kind of understanding of it. But how about JavaFX? Like where could you learn the basics of that? Well, I learned them uh, while I was writing Fix. I, I didn't have any uh, experience with JavaFix before, and um, what I used is a, a Java doc for JavaFix. And uh, we prepared a little template to make it easier to get started with the, with the CLGFX that we can try after a break uh, that has links to Java doc. Okay. Cool. And uh, there's a few questions on styling as well. For me, I'm thinking uh, when you write the CSS, can you inline that inside the component as well? Or is it only as a separate style sheet? Uh, Java, JavaFix uses a similar approach to web installing. So it has both uh, CSS support with style classes and inline styles. OK. Um, CLGFX supports both. OK, cool. Because um, there's another question as well from Emil on, uh, do you have to write the CSS as uh, code, or could you load a pre-existing uh, CSS file? You can load a pre-existing CSS file. I just don't want to do that. OK. I would rather write it uh, in code. <laughs> OK. And the reason for that is, uh, feedback loop. When you edit your CSS file, uh, I mean, you, you do it in some other place and you need to save it and then you need to reload it. But when you are using CLGFX CSS library, uh, you can just reevaluate your CSS definition it will, and the changes will be applied instantly. Cool. And uh, Emil also asks, more or less instantly. Um, the cascading part of CSS, uh, do, the, do the style sheets still cascade or do you need to put styling on each individual element? They cascade. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last question for me as well. Um, so you have kind of your own implementation of subscriptions, uh, sort of like in Reframe. Um, would it be different to uh, like, would it would be difficult to actually use Reframe as sort of the state's manager. Because my understanding is that it, it basically just wraps around an atom. 
uh, I don't know how easy it would it be to to hook reframe into it. I think reframe is not supposed to be used on uh, on the GVM, right? I'm not really sure. I think I remember reading some discussions that even though it is written in CLJC files that imply that it can be used both in CLG and Clover script, uh, it's not really supposed to work uh, on the GVM. Okay. Yeah, but th there are some differences uh, with how the subscriptions implemented. And because I think Reframe uses um, reagents, atoms, and cursors, and uh, CLGFX, on the other hand, uses values. Uh, uh, so its subscription system is like a, 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 a bunch of memoization, uh, like a layer of memoization on top of the value. So you can have your, you can have your up state as a value. And if you wrap it in uh, this memoization context uh, that subscriptions use, uh, you can, and you can just use this subscription context to or memoization context to call functions on that wrapped value, but and the results will be memoized. So, so this is why it behaves similarly to your frame subscriptions, uh, but uh, the mechanisms are different. Oh, okay, I gotcha. So it's not really a drop-in replacement then. Yes. Yeah. But uh, CLGFix is extensible enough to support something like. Uh, like your frame subscription style. Cool. Uh, I also missed a question from Emil. Um, in one of your first examples, why was the event named uh, on username changed as opposed to on changed? Um, is this some kind of a tie in with the components? Um, I think it was the first. This uh, one. I think it's right here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... It's uh, to make it more in line with the CLJ fix style for uh, change listeners, because uh, underlying Java fix has a concept called property, which is a mutable, like a mutable cell. Uh, so your text field has a text property, and not on, uh, and you can set it, and you can observe changes from that. Uh, and in CLGFX, a setting is done with the property name like text, and observing changes is done with property name like own <coughs> changed. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I decided to uh, to name an example function component uh, to have the same style for naming. Cool. Um... And we have the last question uh, from Emil right now. And uh, if you want to create new components, uh, do you need to write them in Java or can you write them in Clojure just like you do in Reagents? You write them in Clojure. All in Clojure? Uh, well, I mean, what do you mean by new components? Uh, I didn't feel the need yet to create my own, like, Render for uh, for components uh, like uh, usually in JavaFX or CLJFX you can just compose them and this is how you create new components mm -hmm. and uh, JavaFX has a pretty rich library around composing them so it, it has things like uh, scroll panes uh, which in web are the default and you can you, you need to disable them <laughs> uh, so they are so progress bars oh not progress bar but scroll bars don't appear accidentally uh, in java fx this is opt-in so you can compose your uh, components from a 
different components. And in my personal experience with Java Fix, that's uh, I never felt a need for anything else. Cool. We have some follow-up questions. I think it's going to be easier if I unmute Emil and let him ask, or ask the question for himself. If that's fine with you, Emil, you can just mute yourself if it's not fine again. So we should have Emil online now as well. Hi, can everyone hear me? Sorry, I got some kids. In, my kids in the background. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. So what I was asking. Okay, so um, maybe there's some confusion with regards to the naming. So uh, for me, a component coming from having used uh, Regent a lot, uh, it's it's basically just a React component. But uh, I think Mark can actually point it out that maybe I'm actually meaning type. So you have text field there, right? And then you've got uh, username input. You perhaps want to have a password input, that kind of stuff I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that thing you need to write uh, in Java. I mean, e Clojure has tools to create subclasses of nodes with things like proxy. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that needs to be written in, in Java. By the way, uh, JavaFX has password input field as a default, like a built-in component. But yeah, the, the answer is that uh, for lower level components, you, you will need to write them. You, you can't write them in uh, CLGFX. Basically, CLGFX can be seen as a, uh, uh, as a abstraction on top of the mutable uh, trees, so you can you, you have trees of mutable objects, and JavaFX allows to represent them as trees of immutable values, and changing uh, and doing all the mutation by supplying a different uh, immutable value. So, so yeah, it, it's more about doing the diffing uh, and doing changes than creating components. Awesome. So if there's no more questions, um, I propose that we take about a five minute break for everybody. Oh, did I hear something? Can you hear that again? The suspense. Suspense. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> awesome. Yes, I love remote meetups. <laughs> cool. So what I'm proposing is that we take a five-minute break and just uh, do whatever we need to do, grab a beer maybe, and then we come back to do the, the breakout workshop. And the plan there is that we break out into uh, smaller chat rooms where everybody is free to speak with each other. And uh, you'll get a link to an example project that Vlad has set up uh, with some like scaffolding where you can just get up and running with CGFX and play around with it and have him or me or Peter or anybody else uh, answer your questions so we can do it all together. And do that for about 45 minutes and then get back into the big main room and talk about what we, what we learned. Um, but let's meet back here at 1910. Uh,